slide it on the ground? <sighs> yeah, once we get it in the house. Today is pull the ceiling joists out, reinforce that, and then we're gonna put some collar ties up high so we can actually see what we're gonna be able to see when we open up this ceiling. I'm gonna be flexing my orange theory muscles. <laughs> she worked out this morning, so we'll see how rough A little it sweaty. <laughs> no makeup and sweaty. I'm excited because I am ready for these ceiling joists to go down. So we have the support here. I've gotta put a couple more in. This isn't actually necessary. It's not supporting anything that the original roof would have supported, but they have a support under there now, so something must have sagged at some point, so I'm going to leave it. Okay, so all the ceiling joists are out of over this area here. I'm going to remove them a section at a time, and I'm going to use the old ceiling joists as collar ties up in the roof for the rafters. I'm going to use this big sheet of plywood to stand on while I'm on this side while I'm putting the collar ties in. And we're up. Somewhere right there, there's the board. All the collar ties are in. We gotta get some more ceiling joist out so that I can get a big beam across here and then we can support the purlins with that. Oh, the exciting never ends. Actually, it is pretty exciting. Not so much to be up here since I'm afraid of heights, but you know. Sometimes you have to do things that scare you. I'm getting ready to remove the ceiling joists in the family room here. And there's a big beam that runs all the way to the front of the porch because this goes beyond this wall all the way to the two pillars and that's what supports the front of the roof. 
And I think this is holding up the front of the roof to keep from sagging. You can see it's kind of at a crazy angle. It goes up. This board is broken here that they tied it into and it just goes at a crazy angle. I don't think it's actually holding much up, but I'm gonna support the front of the post until I can get in there and reinforce that front beam that's holding the front of the roof level. That beam comes right in through here and I think the only purpose it served was to support this and help it keep from sagging. So I'm gonna support it right now because I'm getting rid of that and then we'll figure out how to fix the sag later. So when I go back in and attempt to make this level, I'll actually get some jacks out here and jack this up until it's level on the inside. And then I'm gonna put some big two by 12s, probably two or three of them, running across the whole face of this that attaches to the other beam to help support it. That should work for now. It's just a temporary fix. It'll only be there a couple days. So we have Jeff here from Carter's Glass down in Spanish Fork. We're going to drop the link to their Facebook page and how to contact them. And he's going to give us a little lesson on how to measure windows when you're reordering windows. So on a retrofit, things are usually custom anyway. So this whole it's house not like is custom. You're, gonna, you're not going <laughs> to find a custom size that works usually. And they don't have things just laying around that are custom size. So whatever they do, they, they, you know, bake fresh daily, essentially. So that is about as close to standard as you're going to get, but it will still be a custom. It'll be build. custom because we're going right. to do a wood package to match the other windows in yeah. this part of the home. Um, we may not have the depth here to put on these, a window in this size. Okay. Because it'll project out a okay. little bit. So we may want to... Uh, do what they call a flush fin window, okay. which they use a lot uh, in retrofit installations. So there'd be a flange on it that would come out, and then the actual window would sit on the sill a little bit. Okay. On and on the side and on the header as well. So you're the expert. So, so we probably want to measure it that way, and then that'll give us a little bit of a vinyl. Well, in your wood. case, you're going to use wood, so we may have to to look into that. Well, but, Zeb can trim it out to fit however we need it to be. That's true. However you decide you want to do it, set it at this exact footprint and then frame around it. Okay. It's probably what you want to do, so, so All right. that's pretty easy. And we're going to go with a wood window that goes up and down just the way the other was. A single hung or a double hung, actually, probably okay. from wood. So, Jeff, we wanted to replace this. I actually thought this was plexi, but you told me this is actual yeah. glass. It's, it's not to code. Okay. It's, it's what's called a kneel glass. Okay. So when it breaks, it breaks in big sheets. Ooh, like the time that Jack broke the <clears throat> right. door and I called you crying on Christmas Eve? Well, and this is probably uh, too old to be safety glass. Oh, this is, and this is going. So we're going to yeah. be removing this and the storm. So windows. the danger around the door is people think, oh, I can go through it. They miss the handle and go through the glass. Okay. Uh, tempered glass, when it breaks, it's in the tiny little pieces. Kind of like the shower door that you <clears throat> Right, exactly. Okay. So a car door, for example, uh, shower doors, anything around a door and in a door has to be tempered to, to meet code. Okay. Or laminated, but this is the... Tempered is the cheapest option. Okay. And it's three times stronger than regular glass. All right. So essentially, this is all regular glass, but very old. But detailed. Okay. So when you come, you'll save this yeah. because Jeff actually does a lot of reproduction work. Yeah, so you'll I'll, save this and then we'll put a new tempered glass in there. This is an obsolete pattern. Okay. So it is probably Fine. valuable as far as. It's valuable to you. <laughs> All right, sweet. So we'll replace that with something safe. Here. Is there any point in saving, like, the storm door? Do people reuse these old ones? Somebody said that, no. oh, my mom had that. I'm like, oh, I don't know. No, you you, you would uh, recycle the glass, if, you know, whoever does. I think Pleasant Grove recycles glass. Okay. And maybe the county does now. And then the aluminum frame you would scrap, too. Okay, sounds good.
tip over. Okay, now we're sitting on the wall, so we're good there. Just don't let it slide out. I got it. It's a good looking deal. I will. We're going to put a lot more boards, but we're going to raise it a little bit. Here, come look at it over here. I don't think at that height that it's gonna mess with your pretty sight lines for your pictures of your kitchen or whatever. Yeah, no, I think that's fine, especially if we do some pretty corbels on each side. Yeah, it'll have some corbels over here where it meets up with the kitchen wall and then a corbel over there. The beams that are going perpendicular across this way are gonna sit on top of that beam and then they'll tie in that way and then I'll do corbels there. That'll look good. Okay. I approve. All right, so if my beam is sitting right there on the top plane like that, like this is perfectly level, just like that. It's good to go. So we don't need to mess with that. I'll just put that support down in on the floor all the way down to the, uh, the foundation. And then we can start tying in these other walls. All right, we'll get to getting. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. The value of so I need to be able to get down to the floor joist. So I'm going to cut this flooring out right here along this edge. And I've got my saw set to three quarters of an inch. That's how thick the flooring is. And then I'll be able to put my wall through here. So on the other side of this wall is going to be the bathroom. I'm building a two by six wall here because I want to be able to run an air return vent through the wall. So I've, I've got a four by four up underneath the beam. So on this side, I'm, I'm reusing the ceiling joist so there's some nails and things in them. So I got to get rid of those. But on this side, I'm going to run a two by four up alongside the four by four that ties into the two by six. And then the ceiling joist will get leveled out and I'm going to use some Simpson strong ties and I'll show you which type I'm using to tie that ceiling joist into the beam. Okay, so to attach the ceiling joist, I'm gonna be using the Simpson Strong Ties. There's the serial number on it. It's good for butting joists or studs up together against each other that are running perpendicular. These are the screws I'm using. They're definitely a specialty type screw. I'm using exterior grade. It doesn't have to be that because this is an interior wall, but they were the same price, so I went with them. On the back side of the beam that's sitting on the top plate, I'm going to be using this strap. I'm going to connect it directly to the top plate and then tie it into the rafters as well. I'd like to say I can get the camera up here and work at the same time, but you're just gonna have to believe me it's going into the top plate.
In case anybody was wondering, this is what hard hat hair looks like. And <laughs> Zeb has a full on sweaty debris face. This is my hard hat hair. Oh. It's, it's a mess. He's trying to get me to kiss him earlier and I'm like, oh, I'll kiss you later. <laughs> she couldn't handle the sweat mustache. Thanks for following along with us for today's, I guess it's not even demo, for today's rebuild, open up of the ceiling and beam raising. Visit jbraybenches.com for your DIY paint and products that you need to help support our channel. We've had some amazing orders come in and just want to say thank you for that. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.